Shalom, and welcome to the Israel Beat Jewish Music Podcast here on Arut Sheva Israel National Radio. The sounds you hear in the background are Mizmor Le David, the traditional song used to start Shal Shudas, or Sudat Shlishit, the third meal, which occurs just as Shabbat is ending. And this is from a new CD, a Shabbos CD, which was recorded on a Tuesday. To find out more, we're going to interview Rabbi Shalom Brat, the founder and head of Yeshivat Simchat Shlomo, and the project coordinator of this new inspirational CD, which brings you into the spirit of Shabbat. I'm with Rabbi Shalom Brat, the director of the Yeshiva and Sippy Goddessman, who helped produce this CD. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, now, how and why did you put this thing together? Well, I'm going to turn this question over to Sippy because it was really her initiative. Thank you. I personally really, really enjoy the Sudatsu sheet, and I've been coming for years. And I was thinking, why not have it recorded so that former students or prospective students or anyone part of the Chavra can just listen to it and before Shabbos listen to the CD and, and tap in. But of course, uh, I'm fascinated that this wasn't actually recorded on Shabbos. Absolutely not. <laughs> but we forgot to print that on the CD. Right. But it's funny because it's like maybe a live CD that's not really live or, you know, live in New York. Oh, it's not really in New York, you know. But tell us about these week. Well, I guess first you, Rabbi Broughton, because you're the originator and then from a, a participant's perspective, I guess that would be sippy. But what happens every Saturday just before the sun goes down? Well, most weeks we have an open Zudashli sheet, an open third meal. Thank God it's very well attended. Sometimes as many as 70, 80 people show up and crowd into our home. It's the last hour of Shabbos. We usually extend it. We wash, we have, we eat, and then we start singing together. And most of the people that come for a third meal are actually not regular students in the yeshiva, but they're either from other communities or they're visiting, visiting Nachlaot. Word of mouth has gotten around. It's a very special time for all of us to get together. Getting together at Sudash Lishit is particularly special because a certain sense like Shabbos is coming to a close, but on the other hand, it's coming to a peak in the sense that you've just spent the last 24 hours being in Shabbos and you want to find some way, you want to have some way that you can take that Shabbos with you into the rest of the week so that you can go through the rest of the week with a taste of that Shabbos until the next Shabbos. So yes. it's, it's customary among all Jews to have a third meal in honor of Shabbos. And in many synagogues, they have a third meal as well, not, not with a tremendous amount of food, but and much of the time is spent singing. But being that we're students of Rabbi Shlomo Karlobach, Hol of Sholem, and Rabbi Shlomo used to make a big deal about third meal as well, with a great emphasis on singing, the songs that we sing at third meal, most of them are the songs that Rav Shlomo used to sing as well at third meal. It's a time for for focusing on, on the holiness of being in unity with each other. And Sippy, how about you? As a how do you feel as a participant? As a participant, I feel really lucky having having such a meaningful place to go and share Sudashli Sheet with, you know, my friends and people in the neighborhood and the opportunity to meet new people and really connect in a deep in a really deep way as, as Shabbos is is coming out. Maybe you could tell us an interesting story of some unexpected guest. You mentioned that there's a lot of people from all over. So any any uh, stories stand out? Any one individual in particular that was memorable? Well, Tippi, you want to go ahead? Oh, right, Shalom, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, I don't have any particular stories, but it has happened fairly often that people come for, for Shalom Shudas from different backgrounds, and this is the first time that they experience this kind of an environment where everybody's together and everybody's singing together. We've had people who grew up in religious homes and have been wandering around and wandering away from from Shabbos, and they come in here and they say, wow, it can be so beautiful. 
you know, when they all of this, when they realize that Shabbos is not just about what you're not supposed to do, but they realize that all the things that you know that there's so much beauty in Shabbos, and in fact, all the things that we don't do on Shabbos are really meant to free us from the normal activities of the weekday, so that we can be much more present on Shabbos. Once uh, there's this parable, like you know, this young man is getting rab- getting married, and he says to the rabbi. So, Rabbi, during the ceremony, I like to do gardening. Can I do some gardening during the ceremony? The rabbi says, no. Well, can I also call my stockbroker? He says, no. And he goes on and he speaks about, asks about all these different things that he can't do. And he says to the rabbi, if that's the case, like, you know, I'm not getting married, which is obviously ridiculous, right? The point of not being, not doing all these other things during this particular time you know, at the time that you're getting married, is so that to liberate you from all the other concerns of your life, so that you can be present, fully present, in this new relationship that you're going into. So, similarly with Shabbos, you know, like Hashem has freed us from all our weekday concerns and our mundane and mundane concerns, so that we can be present in this marriage that takes place every week. And when we get together for Shabbos Shudas, that's that's very much. The atmosphere of, like you know, like we're 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 not worried about the week, and we're we're just here to focus on being together and and being in you know being together with each other, singing with each other, singing together, and and um, welcoming this gift of unity and holiness. <laughs> Okay, now Sippy, as 
project coordinator, tell us what, what was it like to, to get all these people together? How, how many folks are on this CD? And how did it feel not being, you know, the real Shabbos? It was incredibly easy to get everyone together. I think we were about 14 to 16, um, to 16 people, and literally all I had to do was send a text message to each of them, and everybody showed up on time and just ready. And I think that's just an indication of how important the Sudash Lishit and how much appreciation um, we all have to the Brats for opening us um, opening up uh, their home to us and giving us a place to sing and express and you know holding holding that space for us to experience Sudash Lishit um, in a meaning, in a meaningful way. So it was really easy to get to get everybody together. Just to give even an idea of how, how sweet it was, I, I called one person to find out if they need a ride or whatever, and they said, oh, a ride would be great, you know. You know, oh, but wait, are you guys leaving right now? You know what, I need a few more minutes. Did everyone dress up for Shabbos for the recording? <laughs> and in, in my head, I was like, wow, everyone's taking this, like, really seriously, you know, because when you, when you dress up, you, you get in the headspace, and... I feel like people really wanted to get in the headspace because I believe it was a Tuesday night. Obviously, definitely not Shabbos, but we we all really tried to tap into the, you know, the sanctity of Shabbos that we get to share with each other all the time. Baruch Hashem. To mention uh, Rocky uh, Ziegler, or we we were we're also very thankful to him for his tech, you know, for the musical technical work that he took charge of. Yeah, Rocky did an excellent job. Now the CD goes through Mismor Ladavid and the traditional Shalshudis songs and then actually goes into Havdala and uh, Eliyahu Hanavi. So it's like an actual end of Shabbat. But, so did you actually light a Havdala candle? No, we were in a studio. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no fire allowed in the recording studio. <laughs> because it feels like I'm there. It feels like I'm sitting with you guys when I listen to it. Yeah, it really does, because everybody that was there was there because they wanted to be there, and everybody was fully present. And strangely enough, even though it was a weekday night, we somehow or other brought the feeling of Shabbos, you know, came down, and uh, it was really, really special. Originally, we didn't even plan to do Havdola, and when we finished singing the songs of the third meal, somebody said, Let's do have a dollar. So we did it. Okay, now, Rabbi Brat, who are you, where are you from, and how did you end up in Jerusalem starting a yeshiva? That's a lot of questions, <laughs> but I'll try to answer them. Uh, I actually grew up in Montreal, studied in yeshivas in Canada. Can I ask what yeshiva it was? I studied in the Chabad yeshiva. And I, most of my life, I, I worked in Montreal as a teacher in various community schools, um, most of the years in schools that were actually not Orthodox. I've been involved, like, you know, with, with, all, with, with, with many segments of the Jewish community, uh, all the way from very traditional Orthodox to, you know, Jews in conservative communities and reform communities and renewal. And then um, when I met my wife, Judy, who's really the, the major force in the community over here and the major inspiration, so uh, it was clear that this relationship is based on our moving to Israel. So we got married, and then 14 years later, that, uh, that was back in 1994, we became an aliyah. And I, here in Jerusalem, I started working in the in, for four years, I taught in the schools. And then the closest thing that I know to a bat call, like, you know, like a, a voice from heaven, I'm not saying that I'm hearing voices, but it was pretty clear to me that that we had to open up a yeshiva in the tradition of Rav Shlomo Karlebach. And uh, thank God we did it. And we're now in, you know, completing our 10th year and getting ready for the 11th year with plans for expansion. And as it says on the CD, it's located in the Nachaot neighborhood in uh, number 18, Hagilboa Street. Correct, which is actually our home. Which is actually our home. So we, most of the class 
many of the classes are here, right here in the house. And we also have a men's based midrash right next door at the Toronto synagogue. Okay. Which is a uh, which is which is open every day from Sunday to Thursday from 9:30 to 12:30. And Sippy, how did you end up in Jerusalem being the project coordinator of this CD? Well, I I work here at Yeshiva Simchat Shlomo um, with Rav Shalom and um, and Judy. I I work here, and I guess um, we're always looking for you know new um, just like new creative projects and new ways you know to give. This was one of the ideas that that came up, so we we went ahead with the project. Tippi is very modest. That's her idea. <laughs> and uh, a little about your your wife. Judy Brat, who's you can hear on the CD. Where, where is she from? Because she also has an interesting story, I understand. She's originally from Hungary. She and her family escaped from Hungary during the Hungarian Revolution. We met many years later. Like We got married in 1982. And uh, she spent much of her life in the United States. But she's one of the rare people that I've met who told me that the first, from the moment her foot touched the soil of Israel, her body knew that it came home. And she had first come to Israel back in 1979. She was here for a year. And the uh, circumstances were such that she had, she did have to go back to the States, but she never really left Israel. She's one of those people that literally feels different outside of Israel, and if she's ever outside of Israel, she just longs for for, for Eris Yisrael all the time. And she's always praying that all of the Jewish people should make Aliyah and come and live in Israel and that we have everything that and more than you can ask for anywhere else in the world. So um, she's like a, a real big inspiration to many, many people. We started learning a Zamra today, Reb Nachman's Zamra, and Reb Nachman says that the Gunim are created from the Nikudot Tabat. And the Shaliyach Tzibur, the Jara of the Shaliyach Tzibur, the, the word Tzibur is from the verb Litzbog, to gather. The real job of a Gadal Tfile is to gather together the Nikudot Tabat of all the people that he's davening with. And <coughs> that's how the Nikudot are created by selecting the Nikudot Tavot and focusing on those. So back in the 80s, Rav Shlomo was interviewed by some music magazine, and the interviewer said, how many songs have you composed? So Shlomo said, should I tell you the truth or show off? So he said, just tell me. So he said, between four and 6,000. So then uh, a few minutes later, the guy says to him, you know, you're not even such a great musician. You only play three chords. <laughs> Shlomo didn't say anything. <laughs> a few minutes later, the interviewer says, you made 4,000 to 6,000 songs with just three chords? You're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but the truth is, Rabbi Nachman Zazamra, I, I consider it to be Rabbi Shlomo's biography. Mm -hmm. Himamish lived that way. He always was looking at the Kodot Tabot in every person. And therefore, it's no, it's no big surprise that, that he came up with so many nigunim because Mamashi was gathering the kudot tavot all over the world nonstop. So we shall be blessed to, um, to celebrate Shabbos and to always appreciate Shabbos. And Mamish, just to know this is the biggest, biggest gift besides the Torah. This is the most amazing gift that Hashem gave us. We're talking to uh, Rabbi Shalom Brat and Sippy Goddessman of Yeshivat Simchat Shlomo. Your website is www.shlomoyeshiva.org, and you just released the CD uh, Sudat Shlishit at Yeshivat Simchat Shlomo. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview now during the period of Sfirat HaOmer, which is about half the CD is uh, just a cappella, just you guys singing, as if it's still Shabbos and it's about to end. And then after you do Havdalah, quote-unquote, then you break out the instruments and, 
and sing. So it's kind of like a Sphira CD, but not. Right, you could just you could just skip the Havdala track. <laughs> uh, what what about what about these songs? And you even have some stories on here. You know, who wrote these songs and where are they from and how they get incorporated into this weekly thing? Basically, we start off with Ms. Um, Mole David, which is what most traditions begin with at the third meal. Actually, starting with Ms. Mole David is a custom of. I'm talking about Psalm 23. It's a custom that was uh, started by the Arizal. You know, the famous verse, though I walk in the shadow, the shadow of the valley of death, I shall not fear, etc. Um, the reason that we, and, and this psalm is usually recited at other occasions, not such happy occasions. Um, the reason that it's part of the tradition to, to, to recite this psalm at each of the three meals according to the Arizal, is that as one is going to eat a meal, especially any time, but particularly on Shabbos, you want it to be a, a very special holy experience. And since we're physically engaged in eating the meal, it's easy to lose your concentration and the focus of raising the meal to, to a level of Kedusha and it can easily become just a, um, a gastronomic event, you know. So uh, all traditions have Ms. Morla David, and uh, we sing it with a Shlomo's tune, the way he used to sing it. And then this ne the next song is B'nai Hechola, which is a, in Aramaic, which is also a song composed by the Arizal. We don't understand all the Kabbalistic things that are involved, that are that are indicated in that song, or that are being referred to in that song. However, one thing is very clear in that song, and that it's it's all about forming a strong unity with each other. And the idea being that to really experience Shabbos and to and and in general, all of Yiddishkeit is very very much based on on the concept of unity, not only the unity of God, but the unity amongst us. And in fact, if one doesn't connect with the unity amongst ourselves, it's really very difficult to connect with the unity of Hashem. So that's where the B'nai uh, Hechola song comes in. And that too we sing with one of Rav Shlomo's tunes. And then we traditionally follow with a Negan from Reb Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev, which Reb Shlomo used to sing at Shalosh Shudis as well. And uh, the way I understand the way I understand that is that um, Reb Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev was one was was one of the early Hasidic masters, and he was known as a great lover of all the people of Israel, and he always focused on seeing the good in everybody. So. When we when when we sing this song, like you know, my intention always is to strengthen our ability to see the good in each other. And in addition to that, we also have some of the Chonafshi, which is a song that the Lubavitcher Rebbe taught to Hasidim back, I believe, in 1954. That song is about getting in touch with the thirst, the natural thirst of the Jewish soul to be close with Hashem. And then there's some other songs that we add in as well, you know, to make it Lebedik, the crack of Ernigan of Reb Shlomo, or Nyej Rich Yechlopche, which is a, a, a Chabad song. All these songs are beautiful, but one of the most important things that we always emphasize is that, according to Chassidut, all this, Reb Nachman in, in particular, always emphasize that all the stories in the Torah are really about you and I, and that when we read a story in the Torah about Adam and Eve making a mistake or Cain, Cain killing Abel, we have to realize that these are stories about us and that we have to resolve them. So Rav Shlomo taught that when do we resolve, I mean, based on Chassidut, when do we resolve the sin from eating from the tree of knowledge is by eating together on Shabbos. And what about Cain and Abel, Cain and Hevel? So Rav Shlomo said that when when God accepted Hevel's sacrifice and didn't accept Cain's, 
somehow Hevel imagined if he would have said to his brother, I'm so sorry that God didn't accept your sacrifice. Let me share with you everything I know about how to make sacrifices, how to do a sacrifice. History might, history might have been different. And the point is that we always have to open up doorways, doorways for each other, especially spiritually. And when we sing together, at one moment I might be opening the doorway for you, and maybe a moment later you might be doing the same for me. So so that's why Rabbi Shlomo was very, very insistent that when we sing Zmirat, nobody's allowed to talk and that everyone should participate. And Baruch Hashem, that's, that happens here at, at Sudash Lishit, like, like Mamish, like everybody's participating and it's beautiful. And uh, and you can actually feel how everybody is there encouraging each other to to to, uh, to to get in touch with their souls. We've been talking to Rabbi Shalom Brat and Sippy Goddessman from Yeshivat Simchat Shlomo. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, any final words you want to say about anything? Sippy, you want to go first? Um, yeah, yeah, I'll just quickly say that um, if you want, if you want to purchase the CD, um, you could come to Yeshiva Tzimchat Shlomo, come to a class, introduce yourself, and come pick up a CD. To we want everyone to have one. Come for Sudash Lishit and experience it live. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> okay. Okay. And also, um, we want to bless everybody that you know, particularly now at this time of year, that we're getting ready for Shavuot. That, uh, you know, it's a time of year that we traditionally don't go to any concerts. And it's a period of mourning because of what happened with the students of Rabbi Akiva, which the Talmud tells us was a result of people in the, of, of, of not honoring one another sufficiently. So we want to bless everybody to really strengthen their connection with Am Yisrael day by day, better and better each day to the point that we can reach that unity that we had attained when we had first come to Mount Sinai, where it says that we were like one person with one heart. Sometimes people think that I could never achieve that, but knowing that it was achieved in the past, and it's been achieved twice in the past as far as we know, once at Har Sinai and once on, on the occasion of Purim, so if we've done it in the past, we can do it again, and that we should merit the rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdash with the coming of Mashiach quickly in our days. Amen. Okay, thank you, guys. Or like the Rebbe used to say, now. He used to say, Mashiach, now. Like, you know, everybody knows that there's so much division that that they, they, they like you know in in uh, amongst amongst the different group, different factions in Israel, and we really need a strong infusion of unity. I hesitate to ask this final question, but you mentioned uh, that it's not about the food. But uh, having said that, I want to know about the food. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this much: my wife. She should be well and strong for many, many, many years. She mamish prepares a very nice Sudan Shlishit meal. There are salads, there's hummus, fruits. It's very, very nice. And there's the, the, the best part is the homemade challah. And homemade challah, <laughs> right. Okay, thank you guys very much for coming on. Thank you, Ben. <laughs>